All right, uh, welcome to the Institute for Automotive Business Excellence's Leading Edge. Um, my name is Lisa Buller, the CEO of the company and uh, trainer and, and all that. Uh, today online, we have Patrick Howard. Patrick is one of the best sales guys I know, uh, rivals myself. Um, uh, I don't think he's better, but he rivals me sometimes. Uh, <laughs> And, Wait a minute. I used to be the best. I don't know what happened. No, no, I, I haven't introduced you yet, <laughs> okay. so hang on. You got home, um, kid. Patrick's really good at selling, <laughs> and, and, and he, really, he really understands how to help customers, how to build value, how to close, all of those things. So he's going to help us in those areas today. Um, we have BJ Lee, who actually occasionally is better than me um, at selling. So... Uh, um, and uh, uh, BJ and Patrick and Scott, who's online, all work uh, in the Institute. We're all consultants uh, for the Institute for Automotive Business Excellence, and we're here to answer your sales questions. So welcome, BJ. Thank you from beautiful uh, Southern you. California. Uh, and we have Scott Caster. Uh, Scott is um, had a shop in Northern California, but he's currently of Idaho, works with us here at the Institute. And uh, 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 Scott also knows how to close and how to sell. So um, actually, he's impressed me in a few different ways uh, recently. So uh, we're all here to, to discuss and to talk about sales. Uh, as normal, uh, we're going to ask you to uh, submit your questions. Uh, and we would love to uh, hear those. You can submit those in a couple of different ways. Number one, you can go online here uh, and put them into um, the Facebook and the Facebook feed. I will be doing my best uh, uh, to pay attention to that feed and to pay attention to your questions. Uh, uh, however, uh, it, it will be a little difficult for me because I've got to have 12 different boxes open. So, but I'm gonna do my best to, to pay attention to questions. We also have uh, questions that were uh, asked uh, previously uh, that we are going to be uh, talking about. So we're gonna actually start off uh, with those list of questions that we asked for you, at least I hope we are. Um, and uh, the first question that we have is from Seth Thorson. Um, and it's about overcoming dealer undercutting uh, of the independent shops. He's lost a couple of jobs um, because the dealer is willing to do them cheap, 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 and we refuse to work cheap. So uh, let's start with uh, BJ. BJ, what would you do uh, if your local dealership was uh, undercutting you uh, on, uh, I don't know, some of the jobs that they do? Well, I think the only thing that they can really cut from us, they can try to cut price, um, uh, but I'm not going to go there because what I'm going to do is I'm going to outperform that dealer, right? I'm going to sell them that we are going to give them a much better benefit, a better value. Our warranty is going to be better than the dealer. We're going to give them personalized service. So when they call the phone call, Call us. They're going to talk to somebody live. They're not going to go through three different uh, transfers to get to us and, and probably not even get to the right person. Um, and we're going to educate them on all them items as to why they need to do business with us and not with them. You know, my, my sense of the dealership, in many cases, the client is not confident in what the dealership's telling them. They're, they're insecure. Um, Absolutely right. I, I brought a lot of things over from the dealership because I had – uh, a better warranty and because the customer anticipated better service and price was not the issue. I can tell you that short term, a dealership might be able to cut prices on certain things because they're being supplemented by the manufacturer, by the, you know, whatever. Uh, um, but it's not a long-term strategy for them. And I've even told a few customers, Hey, I'd go over there and get it done. Um, frankly, I can't compete with that price on that thing. They're, they've got some deal going on. Um, and my recommendation is, let them do that one thing. Uh, uh, and I've done that more than once uh, in my career. Uh, Scott, well, more you, oh, go ahead, BJ. Oh, so I was going to say, well, more times than not, uh, it's, it's a bait and switch, right? They're going to tell you we're going to do it for this much, but how many times has it left there at that, that price, right? Well, more I, times I, than not, it hasn't. I can tell you that the dealership traditionally won't put tax in, and they often don't put fluids in. Um, and so the bill that they're telling you is not the bill that you get. Uh, when it's all said and done. Well, uh, and it also, excuse me, but it also depends on, you know, are these, are these people shopping you or are these 
existing customers, you know, so you want to approach it a little bit different depending on. I think today, you know, uh, you know, 10 years ago, I don't think people were shopping as much as they are today. I think that's something that the shops are dealing with more often uh, than, than necessarily I did 10 years ago. Um, and so, you know, if they're not customers who've been customers and they're telling you that the dealership is pricing you, my suggestion is to try to find out why they didn't have the dealer work, do the work, dealer do the work if the price was so good. You know, what is it that, about that situation that made you not want them to do the work? Cause then there's something else involved. Um, I don't know. I, I also would say that I think you win some, you lose some. Uh, and, and frankly, I, I don't want to win every, I don't want to win everybody. If they truly are price shoppers, I'm never going to make them happy. Not long term. I'm looking for clients. That's for sure. And I do, th- and I think we need, need to actually spend some time trying to educate them. Right. Uh, not just the, you know, next onto the next one. I think we want to try to tell them the reasons why there's that separation and why we are much better and what we do differently. And then at that point they can decide where they want to go with that right well and if the if the client is shy, if they are a client and they're shopping you now my question is why is a client shopping me right exactly what, right what right. happened that the client's shopping me scott what what do you what, what what's your advice well my take on it is that i've and uh you know when we were short in the shop i'd have to run out and get parts and sometimes i'd have to go to the dealer when, and sometimes you just have to get a dealer part for certain <laughs> repairs but uh, many a times I have uh, been there when Napa or O'Reilly's are delivering parts to the parts counter at the dealer. So yeah. when the customer's calling, are they are you getting apples to apples comparisons on what they're <laughs> what they're price shopping? And as we all know, you can you can get a really really cheap price from O'Reilly or Napa, but is it that something you really want to put on your customer's car and oh, offer your you know your your good warranty, right? I had, I had an experience once where one of my clients, we, we needed to do struts and, and uh, I priced them out and they were, I don't know, 1200 and some dollars on an Audi. And uh, um, the client said, uh, I'll let you know, uh, give me a half an hour or so. You know what that means, right? I'm going to call him. Um, he was one of those guys that I was kind of, I, I didn't really like him as a client because that's what he did every time. It was, you know, he was, he was going to give you crap about your price. Um, he called me back. He was pretty angry. Uh, he said uh, I was trying to rip him off, and he called two dealers, and it was uh, they were they said the the struts were only seven hundred dollars. So I'm one of the things to do suggestion. Don't be surprised, right? Not not like you did something wrong. I, I have no idea yet what's going on. I told him I said that's really unusual. I mean, if we were a hundred dollars more, I I understand that. But if we're seven hundred dollars more, that or you know five hundred, that's I, I don't get that. So could you tell me who you called? And he gave me the two dealers and I called them. And uh, sure enough, when I asked him about struts, they said $700. And I said, wow, that's, you know, that's a great price. Does that include installation? And both the dealerships told me no. <laughs> so I said, well, if, if you had to put them on my car and you had to charge me tax and, you know, license and whatever else you had to charge me for shop supplies, whatever, what would the bill be? And he said, uh, I think he said like $1,450 or something. It was like $200 more than what we were doing the job for. And I said, well, I'm always happy to match the dealer's price. Um, you know, <laughs> but why don't you let me do it for the $1,200 I already told you, right? And, of course, we, we got right. the job. Well, I, um, I, think, I think you're on to something. Sometimes, sometimes uh, especially if they're relatively new clients, you, you let them go. But, you know, I always try to plant a seed w- when I'm in that situation. You know, uh, I go back to my value proposition. You know, we're going to offer you a three-year warranty nationwide. Uh, uh, we're going to be here for you. You're always going to be able to deal with me, you know. Uh, but I wish you luck and let me know how that works out. And just let them go. Uh, eventually, it's going to bite them. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I would say, and Seth is, is, he's texting me back and forth. Um, you know, sometimes we're going to be more expensive, especially yep. if you're trying to hold parts margin. Yep. And, um, and frankly, I've got to win it with my charm. Uh, and it has to not be about price and yep. I'm not going to win everything. So, you know, I, Seth, I mean, uh, you know, I, I certainly appreciate the situation. I've been in that situation myself many times as has everyone online today. Um, and, uh, sometimes I, I don't win. Um, 
you know, if they are truly a price shopper and they're going to go somewhere else because it's a hundred dollars cheaper, how am I going to make them happy if they're not willing to, Can. you know, come here because I have a better warranty or they get a better experience or, you know, they, they got someone that's actually going to talk to them uh, and, and treat them right. Um, so uh, uh, thank you for that. Uh, uh, that great question, Seth. Now um, I got like four different boxes open here. So um, uh, Matt Clark asked the question, um, unique circumstance. Uh, uh, you sell work on a, on a vehicle with fairly high mileage. Um, like they had an F-150 towed in, it would not crank. Uh, technician diagnosed the fuel pump. There was no pressure or volume from the fuel pump. Sold that along with some other stuff that they could see. Uh, did that work and uh, got the vehicle running. And all of a sudden, uh, they hear a rod knock or an engine knock. So, uh, you know, it ended up being uh, more expensive uh, than it probably ought to have been uh, for the customer. Um, uh, oops, we lost Scott somehow but uh, maybe we'll get him back. Maybe not. Um, uh, uh, how do you deal with that? Uh, even, I would say on the front end and the back end, right? There's a front end and a back end situation. You know what that reminds me of, Cecil? Um, the story that you told about um, the car that came in with the water pump, then it goes from the water pump to the timing cover, from the timing cover, right? You get it into a situation sometimes that's just not a good situation, right? Um, but what do we have to do? We have to just deal with it. We have to be as honest as we can with the client and let them know every step of the way what's going on. Keep them abreast of what's going on. Don't just try to go from point A to point Z and expect them to be happy, right? In a situation, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, um, I've been working with my staff about managing expectations, in a situation like that, especially if it's a car we don't have any history on, it came in uh, on a tow truck and we see that it's got, you know, 200,000 miles and it needs, you know, $5,000 worth of service work. Um, I, I'm going to, I'm going to, at the counter, I'm going to tell them, this is what we're going to do. We're going to diagnose your problem. We're also going to do an inspection on your vehicle. Uh, once we get the car diagnosed, you know, we're, we're going to call you back. We're going to let you know what it's going to take to repair that. Uh, and then we'll give you the findings of our inspection uh, and, and just kind of manage the expectations at the counter uh, before I just try to sell the whole thing in one shot. And, and then we're going to have another call after we get it running. We're going to reassess the car and see if there's any other issues that we need to address. Um, especially, especially if you have no history on the car, uh, you've got to do a good job of managing expectations at the counter and setting your customer up to know what to expect from you uh, instead of just trying to hit a home run right from the gate, uh, especially on high mileage cars that'll bite you. <laughs> I think there's a, and Ben uh, Shelton is commenting here. Um, I think there's a, a um, whenever you can't run the car, whenever you can't fully diagnose the car, you got to tell the customer, look, yep. this is step one. And, and yep. in many cases, you know, the one that BJ was talking about, we had, we had such a leak, in the, in the uh, timing cover, we couldn't fill the car with coolant. I couldn't really run it much um, because even putting the hose in and turning it all the way on, it, it just wouldn't, you know. And I told, the, I told the customer, I said, man, we need to do the, the timing cover on this minivan. And it was like $1,600. I mean, this is not a cheap job. And I told them right off the bat, I almost guarantee you that once we get it running, we're going to find something else and you and I are going to have another conversation. I think when you yeah. can't run the car, you need to prep them for that. You know, hey, yep. the car was towed in. We know that we have to do the fuel pump just to get it running. But once we get it running, there may be other issues on the vehicle, and you need to be aware of that, right? Yep. Um, I think that can also act also serve as a pre-qualifier, right? You're letting them know that stuff up from that is possible that you're going to more than likely you're going to find more items that the car is going to need. And, and right then you'll see people just completely bail out or, you know, they're actually concerned and they want to yep. move forward. So, yep. I think, uh, I think it's really scary in, in the sense of being a service advisor and, t and selling somebody a $1,600 job. And then all of a sudden that doesn't, I mean, it does fix the problem, but it doesn't fix the car. Um, you know, I, I, I want to be, I shouldn't be saying that a lot, but when I need to say it, I should be saying it, right? There are situations, yeah. And you've yeah. got to manage the expectations. It's up to the 
It's up to the service advisor, whoever's dealing with the customer to, to manage and set the expectation. This is what you can expect. This is what we need to do first. If you prep people, most of the time they're understanding. And, and like BJ said, you know, it can act as a pre-qualifier. If they're, if they're him and Han at just, you know, and, you know, doing a diagnostic, they may not be your guy and you may want to send them to, you know, down the street. But, you know, if, if, uh, if, they're, if they say, yeah, they completely understand, you, you get agreement from them uh, and you manage the way, those expectations, uh, most people are very reasonable and they, they understand it. And I think that's easy to say when you have lots of clients coming in the door, knocking your door down, you know, you have lots of opportunities. When you have limited opportunities, it's so much harder to do the right thing, right? It's so much harder to say, you know, because it's a price thing, you know, I'll let you go. Um, I still would say that's the right thing to do, but someone else might argue like, uh, like, uh, you know, Seth, they lowered their price to match the dealer price, which I've done before, Mm -hmm. um, and, and get the job. Um, and who knows, maybe that customer will now be a customer and come back. You know, it's a cost of marketing potentially at that point. I don't know that I would have, but, but, um, I have. It depends. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, what's nice about this is everybody does things some little different and what works for them is great. Right. Um, you know, they may look, lower the price, get them in and give them a great experience and win them over. Um, so that can work for him. May not be the way I do it, maybe the way he does it, but it's okay. Right. It's nice that we can even have the discussion right. uh, and talk about it, you know? So kind um, of- and like you said, I, I think what you'd mentioned just a minute ago was uh, sometimes depending on the condition of your business, right? You're at that yeah. point where you don't have much, money in the bank you've got all the bills coming due and this car comes in uh, whether it's that or something else and you're selling work and in the back of the mind you're thinking oh, i really shouldn't do this job i've done these and i eat my lunch, lunch <laughs> on these every time but you do it because you're turning the revenue and trying to get the bills paid at the end of the week and um it's just a bad spot to be in you but know? i would tell you every time I, every time i've done that it bit me in the butt I mean, every single time I brought somebody and i shouldn't have brought in i knew it somewhere in the back of my head you know it's like don't do this you double the price and then the guy still shows up. Right. Right. Um, uh, you know, I, I don't know that there's a perfect answer. I mean, you know, we're going to do, we're going to do what we do. Right. And Seth is saying, I won't do it again to this customer. Uh, if they push it, (laughs) I I love it. Um, Yeah, sure. (laughs) uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure, buddy. Um, um, so, so anyway, and, and he did basically that so they could experience uh, the, you know, the uh, Seth's business and, and, um, and they did. And now if they're still price shoppers, now's the opportunity to say, you know, it's just not a good fit for us. I think that's a, that's a, I think that's a great idea, um, Seth. So, you know, I, yeah. I would tell you, you probably did the, the right thing there. Uh, I'm going to break into this for just a second. We got a few more questions, but um uh, I need to make an announcement. Um, we're going to be changing our time frame on these. And uh, we're going to send out a poll. Uh, and we would like you to tell us what would be a better time frame. We have some people that we really want to participate. Who I think can really add to the discussion who can't make it at this time frame. So I think that's uh, something we want to do. Um, and, uh, and so uh, look for that poll coming out and let us know what uh, would be a, a good time frame for you. Uh, we'd like to keep them on Thursdays, but I'm not opposed to change to a Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, we also don't want to, um, you know, come up against uh, uh, Carm and, and what he's doing yeah. on Friday. So we're not, you know, I'm Carm and I are friends, and I think he's doing great work. There's no reason for us to be at the same time frame. Okay? Uh, so anyway, um, and uh, uh, one more kind of an announcement while we're here. We're actually going to introduce a new After Hours Leading Edge. Um, that we will uh, launch here in the next uh, two or three weeks. Uh, Going to be at 6 p.m. Uh, uh, Pacific time, which might make it awfully late for some of the other guys. So maybe it'll be at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, and it'll be monthly only and, and targeted on education and some guest appearances. So uh, we're going to make it more available. We've had such great results with this and so much in, uh, input from uh, people that we're going to make it available uh, a live version in the evening so people that wouldn't ask us questions during the day can have the opportunity uh, uh, to do that. Um, now, uh, uh, we have a question here from uh, Alan, uh, 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 Alan Symes. He's in uh, Massachusetts, I believe. Um, price shoppers is the thing. Uh, they take too much time. 
Uh, they seem to be more persistent now than ever. Uh, and they're even coming in when he convinces them to come in, but then they just get the diagonal and they, and they leave. Um, you know, so um, they're killing a lot of his time. What do we do with these, uh, with these price shoppers, you know, that aren't, uh, that aren't going to buy? Do a better job pre-qualifying them on think, the phone. Do you think raising the, the diag might um, pre-qualify some of the price shoppers out? Um, I yes. know our diag was $250 just to get started. And, you know, occasionally I had somebody who absolutely choked on that and, and, and wasn't going to bring their car in. But if you're not going to spend that money on the diag, you're not going to spend that money on the repair. Um, absolutely. So, so Richard, Patrick, I did how, that in my shop. What's that? Go ahead. Go ahead, Patrick. Um, Patrick, how, how, how would you better pre-qualify them? I mean, you know, what, I, I think I know Alan, he does a pretty good job. What else would you do that he's, he may not be doing to pre-qualify? Well, uh, obviously it depends on what they're asking for. Um, I, I ignore them. Uh, I ignore the first two times they ask me for a price and just go straight to the, uh, uh, you know, the appointment. <clears throat> um, you can, uh, the one I like to use is, um, you know, have you, have you called anybody else? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, have you gotten, you know, multiple prices for your breaks? Uh, was one cheaper than the other? You know, and just, uh, you know, there's a lot of different techniques that you, you can use the, the 20 questions. If they're, if they're calling in about breaks, I, I use this all the time as an example. Um, I'd be happy to give you a price on your breaks. Uh, what size rotors do you have? Uh, do you know what size calipers they have? Are they Brembo or are they whatever? Because uh, uh, it makes a difference in, in uh, you know, which uh, brake package you have on that vehicle. People don't, and then they go into the explanation. People don't understand there's, uh, there's a bunch of different submodels, uh, a lot of different packages on the vehicles. Uh, so it's going to make a difference, especially alternators, brakes. These are all things that are easy. You know, what size alternator do you have? Is it 100, you know, 85 amp or is it a 95 amp? Well, I don't know. Well, it makes a difference. What kind of pad, what kind of brake pad, you know, would you like us right. to use? I mean, we use a ceramic pad. It's more expensive, but it lasts a lot longer. Um, a lot of people use a semi-metallic or a metallic pad. Uh, it has some issues that we don't believe, you know, our customers want, such as dusting and, and um, you know, uh, uh, it retains heat it doesn't uh, release heat as much. So we might get a vibration in the brakes sooner than we should. Um, so we, we really recommend that you spend a little more, but you get a better job. It's going to last longer. Twice as long. Yeah. I use that a lot. I, you know, <coughs> it really depends. Uh, I like to, I like to ask a lot of questions um, to find out what they're, what it is they're really looking for. If I can get, if I can get to what it is they're really looking for um, after two or three questions, if it's just about price and they're just shopping, I can, I can just, I'll just send them down the street. Uh, I'll, but I'll after cut the, I'll cut to the chase at that point. Yeah. My, my yeah. answer to that is, well, are you looking for the, the cheapest, cheapest price, price or the best, best value? value. Yep. And if they go cheapest price, I say, well, unfortunately that's never going to be yep. us. We're always going to be the best value. And here's why. But if you really are looking for the cheapest mm -hmm. price and yep. I verify that I've got the number of a shop down the street, they can go to, that's going to put a crappy set of brake pads and slap them on and not replace rotors. Yeah, and if Alan, if Alan's service advisor has any questions, he can private message me. I, I'd love to, you know, I'd love to talk to him off to the side and and, and give him some advice on that. Uh, I think right now him. Alan's the one right in service, so that might be <laughs> part of the problem. <laughs> he is a nice I, I, guy. I, I think you hit it too when you said, and here is why. Yeah. Right. And then that's the benefits of doing business with it. Here's what we do. I think that also leads to product knowledge. I think you really need to know your product uh, and why your product is better than the, than the guy across the street, what he's using. Yeah. Um, I think you need to stay up on your product knowledge training uh, when classes come out on, on new, new and uh, uh, innovative products that are coming out. Right. right? Um, so I, I just think it's good. You got one guy that's doing this type of uh, 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 axle bearing, you know, uh, wheel hub bearing. The other guy's using this type of hub bearing, which is crap and lasts about 90 days and it falls off the car. So, you know, no understanding and knowing your differences and why um, I think it's also helpful in that, in that, uh, in that case. Mary's, Mary's confirming, Mary Steele is confirming the, uh, ignoring the first price question, just go right to the appointment. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. that's, that's what you do. But I think, BJ, what you just said leads us into another direction. And it, it's kind of an important 
uh, 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 direction, and that is, um, what is it? Oh my gosh, I'm getting old. Product I knowledge. Did it again. Just <laughs> poof right out. Uh, um, what were you talking about again? Okay. Product knowledge. Okay. Product knowledge. Okay, so here's here's the question. Yes, I know what I, I was thinking. Um, I'm trying to read questions and know what I'm going to ask next and, and pay attention to you guys. I say old people shouldn't be on Facebook. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, can't do three things at once anymore. Um, what if I'm not a, a technician, but I'm going to be a service advisor? I mean, you know, a lot of, I, I have that question all the time, you know, um, so I'm going to hire this person, but they, they're not a tech and, and, or, or someone will come into class that we teach and they'll say, but I'm not a tech. It really puts me at a disadvantage. Yeah, but you still um, need to know what you're selling. Right. You need to understand the products that you're selling, right? What's good and what's bad, you know? Uh, you don't have to understand, you know, the technical aspects of how to decide whether it needs it or not or, or whatever. But if you're selling a certain product uh, and your guy comes out and he's selling his product and he's telling, showing you a new product that comes out and they're telling you the advantages of using this versus, you know, this other style and why it's so much better and how much better the warranty is, you need to understand those things so you can convey that you know, to your client. Right. right. If I'm going to use a ceramic client. pad, I better understand what the values of a, a ceramic right. benefits of using a ceramic pad on the customer's car are because my pads right. are going to run and thirty, forty dollars more. Yeah. Right. And saying something, and, and I've had times where I've had a new product comes out, a new manufacturer, you know, making something better or whatever, and it'll have a cutout or whatever. And I may have that sitting on my counter. Uh, maybe it's a product that I sell a lot of and I can kind of show them the difference. Here's the difference in a competitor's versus what we're using, and here's why it's a little more expensive, but it's going to last you, you know, much longer, and you get more life out of it. it more turn. value, right, for the, for yeah, the client. Exactly. Okay. I think it, I think if your I think if your salespeople are properly trained, um, they don't necessarily have to have a ton of of knowledge about the workings of the car. Um, they've got to be able to shift the conversation. To where they're comfortable and and and, and stick with the value, uh, the pro, You know, you don't have to talk in specifics necessarily, but uh, you know, our our product, this product that we use is going to last. You know, so much longer. Uh, that's why we stand by it with a three-year, thirty-six thousand mile, or whatever your warranty is. Uh, and that's why we're confident that this is going to solve your problem, and you're not going to have to worry about it. Uh, well, that's where we get into solution selling, right? Yeah, They've got a pain. Yeah point and we've got to get them through that pain yeah. point and here's the best way for you yeah. to get there in our professional opinion we're educating them i knew Absolutely. this would be like a great topic to discuss sales because <laughs> like we're all we're all like just really intensely sales oriented and uh it's really good uh ben shelton um makes a point i think it's a, a valuable point to make don't tell the customer no don't argue with the customer just move them in the direction you want i don't say uh, no, I can't give you a price. I just, uh, I say, sure, I'd love to help you. Uh, let's talk about, uh, you know, brake pads or, or let's talk about uh, this or here's, here's why we do what we do. And I start talking about my unique selling proposition. Uh, so, Scott, tell me, um, tell me about unique selling proposition. What is that for someone that may not understand uh, uh, what, we're, what we're talking about here? Well, I, I think that... I think that the main reason most people call up and ask for a price is because they don't know what to ask. Um, the, the, the whole point of, of calling up and I mean, that's, that's basically what people do. I don't know what to do, but I need to get my car fixed. So I'm going to call up and ask for a price or is the car at another shop and they're just price shopping you just to compare with another shop. I think, um, you need to give your benefits that you offer in your shop. You need to uh, let them know that you have loaner cars. You can get rides. You need to take away all their excuses when they bring the car in and create a relationship on the phone with them that they just can't um, deny um, that other shops won't do. Um, I think, I think I, every service. You can eliminate all their excuses and if they just still want to, if they, I think I got internet. We lost you. Yeah, you you do. You are having an issue. Yeah. Um, Patrick, you had a comment. Yeah, I think uh, I think every service advisor needs to understand what value their company brings to their clients. Um, without that, that's your that's your basis for all your sales. Uh, that's it takes away a lot of excuses. That unique selling proposition. Um, 
you know, we, we offer, you know, all, all the features. We got a three-year 36 uh, loaner cars. All these are features, but we got to add the benefits of, of, of using us, our, our services. Um, we have a three-year 36,000-mile warranty. Uh, it's going to give you peace of mind. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I've had customers, that, uh, and I use stories all the time. I've had other customers come from other shops where they just had some work done, and we have to, you know, we have to fix it. So we're going to stand by our work. We have a, we have a, a, a no questions asked a guarantee. We're going to just take care of you, uh, and 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 expound on the benefits of doing business with you. Uh, that that will allay a lot of their fears uh, because people forget how how scary it is for normal people to do, you know, come to an auto repair shop. It's it's frightening for them. It's a it's a big deal. Okay. Um, I, I agree with you 100%. I think, you know, I need to be very clear about what my value is mm -hmm. and, and be able to talk about that um, with the customer, right? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So go ahead, BJ. No, 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 go ahead. No, I didn't have anything. Okay. I, I, I feel like the better I'm prepared there, you know, this is what we do. This is why we do it. The more likely that customer is going to um, it's just like I'm, I got my ammunition. I'm ready to go, right? This is a, this is a game of wits, uh, frankly, and I'm going to have more for you than you're going to have for me. Um, so, you know, every, every excuse you have, uh, I have an answer for that. And the only excuse I can't uh, clear is you, you don't want to pay me. And that's an excuse I can't get rid of, right? I mean, that's the only one I don't have an answer for. So if it's warranty, we have great warranty. If it's service, we have great service. If it's if it's quality product, we have the best. Uh, if it's uh, great technicians, we have the best. And I can tell you, I can tell you 15 stories that would, would say that a good technician and a good diagnostic that you pay for is much less expensive than having somebody work on your car who doesn't necessarily know what they, what they you know, know, know what they're doing because a lot of money gets wasted and, and spent. And I, I certainly don't want to, uh, do that for my for my customers. Uh, BJ, you got a shout out uh, for somebody. We're at about midway, so I'm going to let yep. you go ahead and. Uh, I'm going to give that. a shout out to Craig Zale, uh, Craig's Car Care. He's in Allen, in uh, Allen Texas. Um, has dramatically improving his opportunity, his average repair order, uh, productivity. Everything is going up, up, up. He's doing a great job. I want to say hello to Craig Zale and congratulate him on really, really doing a great, great job. Good All job. right. Um, yay, yay, Craig. Good, uh, <laughs> great work. Keep up the, keep up the fantastic work. Um, uh, now, the, guy has uh, a beautiful, another... the guy has a beautiful garden. I just want to say that. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I saw that so, online. Oh, my uh, God. So. Yeah. So uh, Seth says I'm rarely on the counter anymore. Uh, he only gets uh, involved in a, a few rare things, so uh, uh, his perception may be skewed. Um, I don't know, Seth. I think all of us kind of uh, battle that. You know, I have too many people, and it seems like it's, it's, it, it's all about price. I guarantee you, though, it's not all about price. It's more about something else. I don't know what it is, but it's something else. I think we um, got to be careful that we don't take one or two things that happen that week yeah. and think that everything is all about that. Right. right. It, um, we just go on to the next one. We train our people the best we can. We train ourselves the best we can. We treat people fairly, uh, you know, and stuff. And, and I think, uh, you know, you, you, you take the, the bad ones with the good ones and you obviously will have more good ones than bad ones and you keep trudging forward. Yeah. I, think I, you know, I, have, a per excuse ahead, me, I have a perfect example of that. Uh, this week we've had two people tell us we're too expensive uh, since I've taken over. It's, we're too expensive. Yeah, you know, um, and, you know. Out of how many? Out of hundreds, you know. I, I mean, we've literally had a 1,000 clients through here, and we've had two people say we're too expensive. Um, uh, you know, my answer to them is, well, you know, I'm sorry if, if you feel like we're too expensive, but uh, I want you to know that we're going to continue to be here and provide high-quality service. Uh, I hope to be able to service you in the future. I wish you luck. You know, yeah, and a high quality product, right? And I mean, a high quality product, that, right? That's you right. Shouldn't. You know, and 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 I want to double back on something real quick because I, I wanted to say something about um, sales. Uh, a lot of a lot of service advisors.
have a fear of, of being salesmen, of, of selling to people. Um, and they've got to get away from that. Um, just touching on what we were talking about before, it's, it's our duty and our responsibility to be good salesmen because we're trying to help people make good buying decisions for the car. Um, and too many people forget that. Uh, nobody likes being sold to, right? Um, but when you're an advocate for the car, you, what you're trying to do is you're trying to help these people make uh, good decisions because they don't know what's good for the car. You're supposed to know what's good for the car. And right. uh, I, I, think that's, I think a lot of people struggle with that. I, right. you confidence. Know, you that. gotta instill that confidence. Yeah. Once they have yeah. that confidence level, you know, they'll 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 improve much better. You know, we have uh service fighter A and service fighter D, right? Um you've got the guy over here that that's really, really totally confident, has a huge ARO because very confident, understands his product, and he conveys that, mm -hmm. that to the customer. He's gonna oh. take good care of them. But if you him and haw around, well, you know, you really you should do this and uh, what you know and you're him and Han and, and they're second guessing you you know your sales are not going to be too good you know? uh, the, th so. the thing that the thing that I hate is when people take no for an answer okay yeah. you know I, I you got it. It. no double back you know um, well mr. Jones uh, uh, you know when most people replace that belt don't you when, when it breaks yeah. so let's take care of it today and when is that going to happen? Right? And I don't want, you, I don't want you to be that guy. I don't want yeah. you to be that guy. Let's yeah. take care of it today. And I um, use that one a lot. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, Tatsu says, what about jerks? I'm going to answer that one. <laughs> uh, what do you do with the jerks? Which you're going to get, period. It's, it's, it's part of the game. What do you do with them? You forget them. <clears throat> Bye. See you later. <laughs> um, I, 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 don't waste your time. Um, they're not going to help you. They're not going to make – you're not going to make money on them. Um, uh, and, and they're going to do what they're going to do. And, and everyone that knows them knows they're jerks too. So it's not like, uh, you know, they're going to tell all your friends that, Oh, I called this shop and they were too expensive. Uh, you don't want them either. They're their friends. Uh, you, you just don't want the jerk. But you as a shop owner, but you as a shop owner, you stay professional. You don't become the jerk. Thank yeah. you, BJ. Don't play yeah. into it. Yeah. Always be nice. Always have a yeah. smile on your face. Even while you're telling them, I'm sorry, you're just not my client. I really want you the best. Yeah. You know, if we can help you, we're going to be here. We'll do everything we can, yep. except I won't give away my life, right? Yep. And, and this is my life. This is what I do to take care of my family, and I got to pay my, my staff, and we got to make money so that I can do that. Um, anyway, um, all right, so we have, a, we have another question here, uh, and that question is from uh, uh, David Tab. He wants to know about closing techniques. Um, when people hear this, he says they think a hardcore salesperson, um, but is it really uh, expectation setting and making sure the customer gets the best service? Yeah. Uh, do you have some secrets about closing uh, that would benefit uh, uh, the people that might listen to this podcast? I, I just think you want to be, be, be sincere, right? You want to listen. You want to be a listener. You want to listen to their problems, listen to what they have to say, don't overpower them. Once you listen to them, right, you want to be truthful and confident, um, look them in the eyes, you know, don't look shifty, you know. Um, <laughs> That's hard you know, for me. Don't, don't talk too fast, make sure they understand what you're telling them, right? So I, need, I need plastic um, surgery is what you're telling me, right? <laughs> <laughs> Um, Scott, you had a you had a comment. I think uh, yeah, I, off, but. I think it begins at the write up. As soon as the customer calls on the phone yeah. or uh, they come into the uh, the shop, is is that you start building a rapport with that customer, and the customer becomes more familiar with you. You become more familiar with them. It makes that close so much easier. And you've done everything that you've told the customer that you're going to do. I've called you by ten o'clock to let you know about your vehicle. This is what we found. Um, this is when we can have it done. I think that when you put that all together and you have checked all those boxes, that the, the closing the sale is is uh, easy, easy. You know, there's so many there's so many different things that you can do to create confidence in the potential client. Um, you know, obviously your website, how it looks, the way the shop looks when they come in, how you answer the phone, um, you know, with a smile mm -hmm. on your face or, uh, or grumpy or grouchy or, you know, that, that can change the, 
the whole game, uh, whether or not you're, you're in control of the conversation, asking questions and asking good questions and, and sounding interested, uh, um, you know, which some of us might struggle with, uh, you know, that sounding interested. I mean, I've answered 8 million phone calls at the counter. Uh, I've had the same question 8 million times. It's kind of hard to be excited about that same question again. How much for a water pump? Um, but uh, I think we need to, to, to put the face on uh, uh, for the client, and that's going to help us be successful. I mean, Patrick said something about confidence. I'll tell you right now, um, um, confidence is, is huge, 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 right? So, I, like I, I like to, I like to, uh, to answer <clears throat> David's question. One of the techniques I like to use, because uh, most, most of our selling is, selling is done on the phone, uh, Right. Unless you're having waiters, but um, that's another conversation. Uh, I, I, I like to preface the conversation. Uh, Mr. Jones, uh, it's Patrick from Star Auto Service. How are you, sir? Uh, great. Um, I, I'd like to start off by asking you, what, what's the goal with this car? Do you guys love this car? Are we keeping this car for a long time? You're going to give it to your kids? You know, f find out what, they, what their goal is with the car. It shows that you care. Um, it, it gets them engaged, invested in what we're about to talk about. You know, I don't know. I, I think sometimes, the, you know, I agree with you. I'm, 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 I'm just playing the devil's advocate, and that is, I think people lie to you because they don't want you to tell them about the stuff it needs. I mean, you know, hey, I'm getting rid of this piece of crap. Don't, uh, you know, don't even look at it. I just want, you know, I just want the oil change, and then I'm going to drive it for another six months and bring it back in and tell you I'm getting rid of it again. Um, and that's what, and, and, and they do that. Yeah. And, but, but, but you've got to be able to handle that too. Yeah. Uh, I, would Sarah, say more times, I would say more times than not, that type of client is probably just not, not financially able to do the stuff. And they, so right. they just rather not know, you know? Right. Right. Um, I, I had a yeah. comment from, from somebody that was a great comment and I've lost it in the, in the, in the length because we have a lot of people <laughs> online making comments and saying hello. Um, Sarah says um, uh, it's hard sometimes for her to stay calm. What do you do? Um, what do you guys do uh, when you got a client that's kind of getting out of hand and, and, and all of that and you need to stay calm? Cause I mean, that's a lot of it is staying calm no matter what else is going on. So, so Scott, what do you do to stay calm when you have a client that's uh, that's giving you a trouble? I just review everything that we have done. If you're, if there were uh, is pertaining to the repairs that we have performed I will go step by step. I will slow them down. If they have questions, I will answer their questions. I will take as much time with that customer as I have to, to make them understand exactly what we have done. And then I also, I, I like to learn from it. It's a great learning process as an owner to figure out where, what step did I miss to have this problem with this customer and train the staff on it also. But I think that you just, you have to rehash the whole uh, repair, the whole, all the steps, and um, it, I, sometimes I felt that that has calmed down the customers. Uh, a lot of the, um, the upset customers are because of misunderstandings or something they didn't understand along the way. So, And I, I think, you know, if, if you're my customer, you trust me at least in some way, you're willing to listen to me. Um, and, and if you're not willing to trust me or listen to me, I don't think I want to work for you. Right. Um, you know, I, I, and I know that, you know, misinterpreting that, uh, you know, in people who have been through my sales classes. I know a lot of them would say, oh, you know, Cecil says, get rid of this guy and get rid of that guy. And if I do all that, I'm going to get rid of everybody I have. But frankly, I don't think we chase too many customers away in our business, even trying to. Um, I'll bet we didn't chase one or 2% of our clients away per year um, uh, because, because we held the line, because we said, this is what we do and this is what the cost is. <coughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Um, uh, I, I, I would. There's so many things that I can do uh, to be ready and to be prepared for that question that this guy or gal is going to ask me. You know, I, I think one of the things every salesperson that's going to sell automotive service and repair should do is in the first six months write down every single objection that your customer had, and what you're going to find is it really comes down to about six or eight things. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. um, you know, you're, you're too expensive would be one of them, but, it, but it's fairly rare. Um, I, th I think it's, it, it's about them not understanding what it is that you bring to the table uh, uh, that, that is of value uh, to them, you know, whatever that might be. 
Um, there's so many things that you can do. If I, it, it, you know, uh, oh, I got to talk to my wife. Well, you know, let me make this easy for you. Um, I'll uh, let me give her a call. By the time you call her and talk to her, she, you're going to forget a bunch of stuff. You're not going to be able to answer her questions. And and after I talk to her, the two of you can get together and let me know what your decision is. Um, you know, there's just these different. Again, if I can pinpoint the eight or ten objections that I'm going to get and have great answers, uh, I think it's funny. You know, I can't tell you how many times I've had some type of an argument with somebody or I, I couldn't answer an objection. And, and about two hours later, the, the bell, you know, the light goes on in your head and you're like, I should have said this. I should have said this. <laughs> um, write it down. Uh, uh, write the objection down. Write that down and then practice that like a hundred times. Uh, so the next time somebody says something like that, you're ready to go. Yeah. Um, what I are your, I think uh, that helps you in that, in that confidence building part of it too. Right. right. You know, well, and so, I think sometimes we need to be careful and we need to slow the conversation down sometimes, right? Yeah. Uh, there's some objection and, they're moving, and you're moving too fast. So you don't have time to think. I think if you just take a few breaths and slow the slow conversation the down a little bit, yep. you can think a little better uh, and react yeah. better. Yeah, but you got to be careful. You don't want to be too slow, right? Um. <laughs> well, I don't want to so, get into wanna, you want to you want to prepare before you even get on the phone with the customer. You want to prepare. You want to think about what you're going to say. You want to go into uh, the fight prepared. Uh, think about, you know, think about the customer. Uh, if, if they're uh, an existing customer, you know, what, what's important to them? Uh, you know, be prepared and have some things ready uh, that you can anticipate, you know, they may object to. Um, I find, uh, I try to, I try to instill in, my guy here that, you know, be prepared to have the answers. Uh, think about the conversation you're going to have and try to answer any objections you think they may have in your sales presentation. Um, you know, when you're, when you're talking to them and have those and just address them in your, in the way you present the information. You know, that there are, there are different jobs that we sell. Um, I, I mean, you know, how many times do you hold a brake job or a water pump or a, you know, valve cover gaskets on different cars. And the reasons that you sell those things are always the same reasons. And I think that if you anticipate the fact that somebody on a water pump is going to want to know, you know, uh, I don't know, is there, could, can it cause additional damage to the car? And you have that discussion with them in the beginning and you do it in your sales presentation, they can't have that objection. Right. right? Um, and how about Go ahead. I was talking earlier about pain points, right? You got a pain point. That pain point might be that you've got a water pump that's seeping uh, and we're recommending replacing that now, right? We're trying to reduce the bigger pain point down the road, which could be, you know, uh, an engine or cylinder heads. Yeah, or my whatever. wife is so, stuck on the side of the road and I'm going to have to buy a motor. That's a yeah, big pain have point. A story. You know? Have a story ready when your sales presentation. Right, right. Uh, for, for cooling system stuff, I've got a great one. Uh, had a client doing it now. Two weeks ago. Yeah. Right. Two weeks by ago, doing it now, how can it, right? By doing it now, how can it dra dramatically reduce cost over time? Yeah. Right. So yeah. taking it from this pain point, we don't want it to become this big one down the road. So, so, so Patrick, tell tell me your story because I'm <laughs> okay. You know, again, uh, had a customer in two weeks ago. Uh, we told him he had a leaky radiator. He said he's going to drive it and just top it off. Uh, we we encouraged him not to uh, do that. Uh, we tried to get him to stay and let us fix it today it was seven hundred dollars hoses thermostat uh, he said no i'm going to take it he comes back two weeks later the car is dead uh, it's got a blown head gasket and it's thirty six hundred dollars and i use that story for all my cooling system stuff um, yeah let me tell you about what happened with this guy uh, and how so many times how many times i mean that's happened to me right multiple times i mean I, I could tell you a story about the guy that didn't listen on the axle and i can yeah. tell you a story about the guy that didn't listen on the tires and the guy stories are powerful water pump, right yeah they work uh, great if you've been doing this for a while you, you better have some of those stories i mean yeah. otherwise you're selling everything right and everybody listening to everything you say uh, <laughs> which might make your ego a little too large <laughs> you know <laughs> but uh, but i'll take you as a service advisor if everybody listen to everything you say right um what, uh, 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 there's a, a question from John uh, uh, Kephart um, that says, uh, how to present the idea that it's worth it to spend money maintaining a, an older car? So the car's got 120, 130, 150,000 miles. How do you convince 
someone without twisting their arm or breaking their arm that it's worth it to spend that money on on that vehicle scott yeah i can uh i can tell you a new a new car payment is anywhere between 475 and about 525 dollars and that doesn't include the full coverage insurance that you need to have on it uh newer cars also last longer or the right. 10 year old car lasts much longer than it did before um and maintaining that you just save money down the road maintaining it versus buying a new car is much easier okay um we used to have, a, uh, out again. We, we used to have a chart uh and we used to we had a chart that was laminated right and what that had was the cost of maintaining Meaning, uh, and keeping the car versus a new car, what those different, uh, uh, what, you know, it had a, you know, if you keep the, the old car, here's the, here's the maintenance and, and so forth, you know, here's the new car with the down payment, the monthly payments, the additional insurance and different stuff uh, down the road. And, and that was really an eye opener. Uh, that was pretty well. And then I think also, you know, discussing the pros and cons, evaluating the certain condition, you know, the, the current condition, you know, it, can the car be repaired? Can it be repaired and still be a safe vehicle to be on the road? And how much more life does this vehicle have in it? Right. I don't they're, they're, they're looking, they're looking at us for the professional guidance on the best decision for them to make. I, I don't think most people really think out the new car thing. It's funny. My daughter um, just bought a new car, her, her boyfriend and her, you know, whatever. And uh, I, I, I insured her car. She's under my insurance because of her age and other issues. And uh, uh, you know, she comes to me and she goes, uh, after she bought the car, she goes, oh, yeah, it, it should be a lot cheaper to insure that because it's new, right? You know, like, <laughs> like that was some, some thing. And, and I'm like, no, your insurance is probably going to double, could triple at her age. Um, wow. I, I don't think she even realized that her insurance would go up by a couple hundred dollars a month, um, you know, potentially. Uh, and what's, I, what was cheap for her because you're paying for it. <laughs> yeah, well, she does um, – she does pay me back mostly. This one does. Um, uh, so, uh, and if I didn't, my wife would probably divorce me. So, you know, I, I, I need to, I need to, to take out the family. <laughs> um, uh, you know, Trent says main, maintaining the car is always cheaper than, than a new car, a new car payment. Uh, I would agree with that. I think the only time that I don't recommend taking care of the car, servicing the car is if the car is, um, not serviceable, not, not able to be brought into, you know, shape and be, and become safe. Um, so, so how do you, again, how do you handle the, you know, the car is not worth it objection, uh, from the client? I always, I always go to, well, let's, let's, let's do the math. Let's talk about it. Uh, the, the $3,600 we need to get this vehicle who has 150,000 miles on it up to speed. So it'll be back to uh, pristine condition. Uh, that's not even a down payment on a used car. Um, and, and the other thing is, uh, uh, you know what you've done to this car. We've taken care of it. We've maintained it from the beginning. Um, mm -hmm. This car will last you another five or 10 years. It really makes sense to invest this $3,600. And then, and then down the road in the next five, five six years, there's going to be things that come up. Uh, but of they're going to be small things. Right. Uh, and, and, the, and the great thing is, all the work we do comes with a three-year, 36,000-mile warranty. So anything that we do, we're gonna, we're, we've got you covered. We're going to take care of you. We're going to make sure this car stays on the road and stays safe for you and your family. It really makes sense to do this service today, and let's just take care of all of it. Uh, yeah. If you're talking about going and getting a new car, we're talking uh, $5,000 minimum down payment. Uh, we're talking about a uh, $500, $600 a month car payment. Is that something you, you want to do today? And I'm going to lose five grand in value just the minute I walk off the door and I'm going to pay 3,500 in tax. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, it just, you, you've got to have, the, you've got to lay it out and you've got to paint the pictures. You've got to have these stories ready to tell these people, these things should be in your back pocket. You should, I use the same stories over and over and over again and they work. They work. You, you've got to, you've got to be an advocate for the car. It's not, I, I have a philosophy. If you do, if you provide a great service, and quality repair, uh, the money will come. If, you, if, you, if, you, if you're doing all the rest of the marketing stuff and all, if you just, just take care of the people, be an advocate for the car and, and do a good job at the counter, you'll make, you'll make tons of money. Yeah, for me, it's so easy. 
uh, at the counter. I, you know, some people I think are born to sell. And I, I, I think I'm one of those people. It just, to, I don't have a problem telling people, look, this is what you need to do and, and get done. It, it makes no sense not to. Yeah. Um, all right. I'm going to, I'm going to break out for one more kind of announcement. And then uh, I want you guys thinking about this last question. Cause we're, we're, we're towards the end here. And the last question is what sales secret uh, uh, would you tell somebody, you know, you're one, like, what, are, what do you do best or what's your secret? Um, uh, uh, so the announcement, uh, we now are on um, iTunes and Spotify with our podcasts. Uh, if you search the, the leading edge on iTunes or Spotify, you're going to come up with the, our podcast so you can listen to them. Uh, we also are at Podbean. So uh, the, inst- excuse me, institutes leading edge dot podbean dot com. That's podbean, B-E-A-N. Institutes leading edge dot podbean dot com. Uh, and you can find all of our, our, our podcasts and we're, 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 we're uploading more. This one will go on in uh, a few days and, and uh, listen to them in your car. Believe it or not, I'm, I'm listening to the podcasts again. And it, 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 it's just, there's some great information there. So, all right, we're going to start with um, uh, BJ. What's your secret, BJ, uh, to being a successful salesperson at the service counter? I would say for me is uh, don't take it personal. It's not personal. Uh, and being honest, be as honest and fair as you can with people. Um, you know, so many people take it personal, um, and it affects their whole attitude and their whole sales strategy. You know, uh, be confident, be fair. Uh, don't take it personal, and you should be successful. Okay. Um, and uh, Scott, what's your, uh, what's your secret? Well, uh, having the properly trained staff um, that they know your product inside and out um, is, I think, is, is pivotal <coughs> of the most important. Okay. Uh, and, uh, and, um, and also, uh, well, I think, so why, why is that important, uh, uh, Scott? Um, it's important because it gives us confidence, yes. right? Absolutely. I feel good about what's happening. I, you know, I know I'm not going to get thrown under the bus too often. Um, I trust my tax. Right? I, 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 I know my warranty and I stand up for my warranty. Um, all that's very, very important. Okay. And when you trust it, your techs are going to fix the job right. And, and, and you're selling the right product that you put on your vehicles, then um, you, you can't go wrong. Okay. All right. Um, uh, uh, Patrick, what's your secret, buddy? Uh, don't take no for an answer. Um, you know, uh, learn some good redirects. Uh, this, I, I love this one. It's very simple. Uh, Mr. Jones, when do you think most people repair this, whatever, fill in the blank? That is a simple, simple redirect back to address those issues. And th- the answer is, right, when it breaks. Yeah. That's, that's always the answer. And, and, and people, when you hit them with logic, they, okay, just fix it. Just, you know, go ahead and do it. Uh, nobody wants to have the breakdown. They, nobody wants to break. Right. right? And, right. And, and you're actually stating the truth. The yeah. truth is, if it isn't maintained, it's going to break. Yeah. I just don't know when. I wish I knew when, because yeah. then I could call you that morning and say, hey, this afternoon, this is going to break, so come to the shop now. Right? People, yeah, people have to remember, our salespeople have to remember, everybody's on the defense. And you've got to you've got to insert some logic in there and get get the price out of their mind, and and, and tell them you know because everybody's seen that guy on the side of the road. Don't be that guy. Yeah. And we have a solution for that today. Yeah. And I can uh, have that done for by four o'clock. All right. So I'm going to tell everybody my secret, and my secret is I'm excited about selling automotive service and repair to my clients. Um, I'm excited about taking care of their cars. I know my job. And I'm confident that when we do it and we take care of it, it's going to be good for my, my customers and my clients. Um, uh, if First of all, we'd like to thank everyone that submitted questions in advance. You can submit questions at the excuse me, institute at i4abe.com. We'd love to have your questions. Our next topic uh, in two weeks is business automation, finding efficiencies within your company. Uh, and hopefully those efficiencies uh, create additional productivity and profits. Uh, so we're going to be talking about efficiencies. Um, uh, if, you, if you're not joining us uh, at the Institute group on Facebook, you should be. Uh, uh, it's about shop owners and managers, uh, and we have lots of great discussions about successful shops. And if there's a, 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 a topic you'd love for us to co- cover, please 
uh, uh, let us know. Um, thank you so much, guys, for being here. Thank you for our audience. Uh, it keeps getting bigger and better. Uh, and uh, I cannot believe, as usual, that an hour has gone by. Um, uh, so this is like the quickest hour of my life every single week. I'm glad I don't do this uh, too often because I'd, I'd end up being 90 before I knew it. Uh, uh, thank you, Jake, Patrick, uh, and Scott. And uh, thank you for everyone that was online. Have a wonderful day. And we will see you at the next one. Later.